instead of crashing on a French couch. So I said, okay, well, you know, I'll just crash in my car tonight. Not a big deal. You know, it's like camping. You know, one night turned into two nights, three nights, a week. After a few weeks, you know, coming up on a month, I realized, like, man, I'm, I'm homeless. So didn't want to tell people I was homeless. You call it embarrassment, you call it shame. You know, that negative stigma. As a man who has always been independent, always taking care of himself, I feel I should have been able to do better. I should be able to do this on my own. But I couldn't. I always try to park behind the warehouses and behind those open spaces. I would drive around for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, just to make sure that it was quiet. This place is only like a mile from the college. And so it's really easy to like just come here right at night. And I, you know, I took a class that ended at like 9.30, so pretty much by the time I got here, everybody was gone. I didn't have to worry too much, like waiting for people to leave. you have to leave, you know, five or six in the morning because you don't know what time people are going to show up. Everybody's starting to get to work. So, you know, I'd get maybe five hours of sleep a night. It was really hard for me to fall asleep because every little sound, I'd be laying in the back of my, in the back of the truck in the back seat. But every little sound, I would jump up. You know, is that somebody coming? Is that the police? Is, you know, so you didn't really get rested. You know, you, you were always on edge. The wind blows and the truck shakes a little bit, and you know you feel like somebody's trying to get in. A couple of times, I had people trying to get into the car, or trying to harass me, um, or you know I'd have the police called, and I'd be laying in the back, and then I get a, you know, banging on the window two inches from my head, you know, flashlights, police, police, you know, can't be here, you know, you got to leave. You know, you're trespassing. It made studying for class really hard. It made doing my homework really hard. And it was tough. I mean, you can see there's not a lot of lighting in, in these parking lots at night. I did everything from my cell phone. You know, I wouldn't go to class because I was just so depressed and so upset about the situation. I mean, it's basic things. I, I didn't, you know, if I wanted to take a shower, I had to, you know, get a gym membership. And if I wanted to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, well, you know, I'd better hold it. You know what I mean? Because there's nowhere, there's no bathroom around for me to access. When you lack basic necessities, basic human needs, you feel, you know, dehumanized. Die meisten von ihnen verstecken sich. Vor lauter Scham versuchen sie, unter den anderen Studenten möglichst wenig aufzufallen. Angeblich gibt es in den USA zehn, vielleicht sogar Hunderttausende von ihnen, Studenten ohne festen Wohnsitz. Das Phänomen ist noch kaum bekannt. Offizielle Zahlen hierzu gibt es keine. Aber Schätzungen zufolge sind sie schwindelerregend hoch. Generally speaking, we're finding between 10 and 15 percent of our students in colleges and universities are experiencing homelessness. 
here in California for community colleges where we have more students who have fewer financial means, those rates are even higher. One in five of our community college students are experiencing homelessness. It's, it's stunning. It's stunning to know that our students are coming to school, they're trying to learn, they're trying to grow. But many of them are sleeping in their cars or they're moving constantly from place to place. Die Studiengänge hier gehören zu den teuersten der Welt. Das erste Studienjahr kostet zwischen 90.000 und 125.000 Euro. Im Land von Hollywood und dem amerikanischen Traum bedeutet Studieren oft, sich auf Jahre hinaus zu verschulden und zuweilen den Absturz. Nach zehn Monaten im Auto kam Anthony White wieder auf die Beine. An seiner Universität Paloma fand er einen Job auf dem Campus, in der Lebensmittelausgabe. Die Lage in Kalifornien ist so schlimm, dass die meisten Universitäten an ihre Studenten gratis Lebensmittel verteilen. So you can see, we got a lot of pastries. It's really the biggest focus is to make sure that students aren't impacted by hunger. Their education isn't hindered by hunger. You know, and if we can do something to just alleviate that one little stress, you know, worrying about, okay, am I going to have breakfast or, you know, I'm really hungry and I'm about to take an exam and my stomach's growling and that's all I can think about. You know, we want to make sure that if they're facing an obstacle or a barrier, we want to do what they, we can to assist them. Because education is the most important thing. And if you're hungry, that's something that's going to be suffering. Street? Oh, and you said I can grab produce? Yeah, we got some uh, produce bags there. You can grab as much as you want. And then that's, uh, there's no limit on that. So next week, starting, it's calendar week. So starting on Monday, you can come back and grab some more. Just apples. You don't want to load up on some today? No, nah, I, okay. like, I don't really like anything else. No problem, no problem. Yeah. All right, we just throw those on there with your bread. How many pounds do I have left? So it looks like you've, uh, what, got four pounds for the month. Yeah, go ahead. You know, if you're a little over, it's Thank no big you, deal. Man. We don't want to say no to students, you know what I mean? They, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Being in school, you know, you don't get to work as much. So uh, having an option, you know, to get some free food to assist is uh, very beneficial, you know. And uh, this particular food pantry here has really good stuff, a lot better than uh, I see in a lot of other, other food pantries. So that's uh, yeah, great. Wie die meisten in der Lebensmittelausgabe von Paloma lebte auch Stephanie noch vor wenigen Monaten auf der Straße. You're all set. My house rent got raised so high that I could no longer afford it. Your folds are ripping. My husband and I were still college students. We had no choice but to find somewhere else to live. And with bad credit here, you cannot get any type of apartment or any housing. So that left us no choice but to move into our car. So we were living in our car for about a year and a half. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. When I found this place and I found the nutrition center, they actually opened doors for me and told me, hey, you know what? You can come on a daily basis to come get the meals you need for the day. And times like that were the ones that would boost us up and make us feel a little more like of a community and that there were there people encouraging us, us on to be college students and to want us to succeed. All right, May, you still have three, wait, three pounds left, okay. yes. No, five pounds left, sorry. <laughs> you have five pounds left. Definitely the issue of homelessness and housing insecurity and food insecurity are complex issues. They're layered in issues around race, around capitalism and poverty. Um, right now, for us, particularly in California, a major issue is the cost of housing. It's very expensive to live here and living wage has not increased with the cost of living. So the gap between what people make 
um, what people get in terms of financial aid and how much it actually costs to go to university is getting bigger. Amerika, das Erfolg, Wachstum und Markt an jeder Straßenecke feiert. Obdachlose Studenten jedoch kennt jeder einzelne Bundesstaat. Und in Städten wie Chicago, wo die Temperaturen im Winter bis auf minus 40 Grad Celsius fallen, kann ein Leben ohne Dach über dem Kopf katastrophale Folgen haben. Emily Edwards betreut Studenten, die in Schwierigkeiten stecken. Sie arbeitet für das DAX-Programm. So the DAX program works with college and university students that are experiencing housing insecurity or homelessness. We provide people with supportive housing while they're in school. As we've seen those rates increase over time for you know, how much rent costs, how much food costs, how much school costs, the textbooks, all of those things. Um, we haven't seen the scholarships and financial aid um, adjust to that as much. So there are a lot of students that there's that gap where they may have a lot of their tuition covered, but then there's no money for those living expenses or food. Dank privater Spenden oder über Stiftungen kauft das DAX-Programm Häuser in der Chicagoer Vorstadt. An diesem Tag hat Emily in einem dieser Häuser einen Termin bei einer WG-Versammlung. So for Megan, Megan was going to do the bathroom and vacuuming the basement. So we're gonna put Megan. But some of the things that were left were kitchen count and so this is between you two kitchen oh. counters <laughs> kitchen counters table kitchen laundry kitchen counters what i am saying for you once a month counters. we are meeting to discuss you know chores just like regular roommate things um supplies general interpersonal stuff because roommates different personalities people um it's always important to check in about those things <laughs> Caden stammt aus Haiti. Er ist extra für das Studium des Rechnungswesens in die USA gezogen. Mitten im Studium hat er sich mit seiner Familie verkracht. Seine Geldprobleme wuchsen ihm über den Kopf. The cooking room and the lot of stuff in your It's the most like beautiful, beautiful thing to just like get things done in, on your own or independently. I was in the shelter and I was really like depressed and I was stressed and I was all like You don't know like who, who you're gonna like face within the shelter because there are different people who come in there. They may be doing drugs and all that. I just resumed my studies and I continued to study, study through the night until morning. And when I got to school, you know, everyone was telling me like, oh my God, why don't you go to sleep? You look tired. And I told him like, like this book that I have in my hand, this is the only way I'm gonna get out, get out of the shelter. And so. As soon as I got into my nose, the first thing I do, I just unpack quickly and just went to sleep. And so. And after I got up, I feel I feel like a I feel kind of like a person again. So my wishes came true by having my own house, my own room, and just be able to do stuff that a that a college student would do, you know. So.
Devin Thompson wuchs auf in einem kleinen Dorf im Bundesstaat Wisconsin. Als er für sein Studium der bildenden Kunst nach Chicago zog, waren die Lichter der Großstadt für ihn wie ein Traum, der wahr wird. Doch dann folgte eine Enttäuschung der anderen. The more steps that I was taking to advance my life, the more that life was kind of knocking me down in the process. It was quite tough. I was taking classes and I had to basically go back and forth from the storage unit with two bags as well as different hotels each night. I grew up Lutheran Christian. I identify as queer pansexuals. So um, any LGBT affiliation was considered very wrong and that it's damnable. It got to the point where I came um, out to my family. I wanted to just live a life that was mine see who I was. Homeless. My family, there's a part of me that didn't want to tell them because of the shame. The embarrassment that I moved to the big city telling them I'm going to be this big hotshot art student and here I am being homeless and struggling to find out where my next meal is. You know, what a disappointment, right? I don't want to be a disappointment. I used to live out of at a storage unit and now I work at a storage unit helping manage it. I think it's quite ironic and also um, very, very, very bittersweet. Nach über acht Monaten ohne festen Wohnsitz bat Devin dann doch noch um Hilfe. Das DAX-Programm vermittelte ihm ein Vorstellungsgespräch bei der Managerin dieser Lagerfirma. So kam er zu seinem Job. So the height was like this, and I then the length what? was going inward like that, and then the okay, width was so that way. The length is this way? Yes, going in that way. So it seems like a job that would be, oh my God, so simple. But you have to be a lot of things. You have to be helpful and friendly and customer service oriented and salesmanship oriented, and you have to clean. So it's very hard to find a person that can do all that, and he does all that. He's very, very talented. You'd never know he didn't have a job. You didn't, you'd never know that he came from a homeless background. He came in here, was pleasant and helpful, and he just takes something negative and makes it positive. to be the type of person where I did not ask for help. But when you go hungry for a significant amount of time and you're walking around with these heavy bags every day, you kind of stop and think, is it really worth, is this gonna be the remainder of my life if I don't try and just tell somebody because someone might be able to help. Especially in the United States where we've really been taught that people are supposed to do things on their own and pull themselves up by their bootstraps, um, it sort of discourages people from feeling like they can really ask for help. 
Um, we have to teach each other that we are a community. Almost 345. And without that support with each other, that we can't make it. And so then people get to learn that if I help you, I'm helping myself. And if you are seeking help from me, that's a gift that you're giving me. But that is a concept that um, we have to grow in, in the United States. Die schweren Jahre sind für Anthony White vorbei. Und so engagiert er sich neben dem Studium noch in der Politik. I appreciate it, you know, the struggle that you guys are going through. Thank you. I know how much that shit sucks. Listen, no. I do. Yeah. I do. But hopefully come this November, we'll be able to make a change, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Nice God to God bless meet you guys, okay? Thank you. Yeah, God bless you, man. I appreciate that. Hi. I don't know if you are aware that we're having an election this November. Yeah, so we're having a, obviously we're having the national politics and stuff going on, but I think issues matter at home, you know what I mean? So I want to be a champion for everybody that lives in this city. Love to give you some information about myself. If you're registered to vote, please come out and support me in November. Thank you so much, ladies. Have a wonderful day. Should have brought more flyers. <laughs> I believe that representatives of local communities should reflect the kind of struggles that those communities are facing. You know, my experience with homelessness, you know, being a, a member of this community, being a student at local colleges, being a father who raises a son in the school system, I want to make sure that everybody's got a, a fair shake, that everybody's being represented. The homeless, the youth, you know, the veterans, the disabled, the elderly, the people that are normally the ones that are left behind when it comes to who's being represented. They're not invisible. I see them. I want to be a champion for them. This is the state of, of dreams. We got Hollywood, and we got San Diego, and bright and sunny cities that are supposed to be the American dream. People come to the state or they grow up here with this idea that, you know, I can be successful if I work hard enough for it. But then you hit one challenge, you get, you know, you, you have one stumble, one trip, and before you know it, you're left behind. Seit vier Jahren rückt das Problem der Obdachlosigkeit unter Studenten in den USA immer mehr ins Blickfeld. An den Universitäten entstehen mehr oder weniger gut funktionierende Initiativen in diesem ultraliberalen Land, wo jeder sich selbst durchbeißen soll. Und so wird es in den kommenden Jahren wohl noch tausende solcher Studenten geben, die Vergessenen des amerikanischen Traums. <lacht>